All right, guys, we are outside here. Nice day, sunny, no cloud. Well, a few clouds out here. And the winds are very light between five and 10 miles an hour, very light. The first thing I want to do here is to change the power output on the VTX from 25 to 50 milliwatt. That's not much, but it is what it is. Let's put this goggle on. All right, power this drone on, change the VTX and go for a flight. Let's do it, guys. All right, let's go into the screen here. Image is kind of dark. <laughs> huh, that's weird. All right, well. Let's try to fly this thing, guys. I'm in angle mode, so let's see. That's close to my head. All right, so this thing has a light tinge to it. All right, so that's a short-lived flight. And for me, my biggest concern is that VTX. I couldn't get that far at all. I did a flight here and I just lost VTX, so I don't know what's going on. I'm gonna go back to the computer, take a look at the beta flight, see if anything has changed, but I don't have any visuals now, so. All right, let's uh, take a look at it. Two hours later. All Right, guys we just came back from our flight very short flight actually first time having a very very short flight but that was due to some technicalities uh the first thing i noticed between the first two flights was just the lack of visuals if i can say that the lack of visuals was immediately noticeable and this thing flew pretty stable when i tested it in the studio uh, you guys saw that video and uh it also flew pretty well on the first battery with the 26 second flight so we did put the 
another battery on here, went for a flight. Still had the same issue with the VTX. I was in the same area that I normally fly these drones, but my main concern was still, if I can't see where I'm going, then I can't really control the actual drone. Now, as you saw initially on the first flight, I tried to change the power output. Whenever I do the setup in here in the studio and on the computer in beta flight, I usually put the drone on the lowest power setting only because I'm doing testing, I'm in the room, propellers aren't spinning, I don't want the VTX to get too hot, but I couldn't get in the smart audio to get it to change to 50. I went to the VTX menu and nothing. What ended my day was that if you notice on that flight and I barely just touched the ground, and then I lost visuals and that was it. I would get the beta flight screen for two seconds and then it would just go black. So there you go guys, I gotta figure this out. Probably gonna look into, I don't know, customer service. Thomas from the future here, and it's been one to one and a half weeks since I last made that video. Just wanna give a quick update on the situation here with the baby Nazgul. I did send this back to iFlight. They did have pretty good communication with me. They did respond to my emails pretty quickly. In this case, the VTX on this drone, or the VTX in my drone did fail. So it was working and it did fail after that short flight. They did revamp and change the VTX in this drone and they did send this back to me pretty quickly actually. Within three days, I got this back. So most of the flight footage that you saw were from the return of this drone after I got it back because Literally the first two flights was all I had with the original VTX on this drone. So now that's all out of the way, I can give you my opinion on this drone. How is this thing to fly? I say it's pretty good. This thing was a really good experience. It's a really fun drone. That's the best way I can explain it. It's a fun drone to fly. The first thing to notice here is that I was using my own one cell batteries. They do offer a one cell that fits the holder of this drone, but I'm using a larger size battery here. I'm using something like a 530 milliamp hour battery here. And uh, the reason I'm saying this is because the flight characteristics and the flight time will be an issue depending on what battery you use for this drone. So I'm using a little bit larger size battery. And with that, I got between two and a half to three minutes. And this is a, I would say a substantially larger battery than the 300 milliamp hour one that they recommend. As I said, initially, I just want to get a feel for the drone. I had it in angle mode, and this thing flew pretty great, really well. It is a little touchy though. This thing is a little bit smaller. Um, any kind of external factors like wind will play an influence in how this drone behaves in flight. To me, the drone did feel better with the larger battery on it, maybe because it's heavier, momentum, maybe more resistance to the wind. I enjoyed it more with the larger battery, maybe because also because the flight time was longer. I didn't have to rush to bring it back to me. But we did fly this uh, outdoors and it was very apparent that the video signal wasn't strong enough. The video is a good example of what I was experiencing. The video that you see on the DVR is a little bit more staticky, there's more interference. So it wasn't that bad, but it was very similar. So after I flew this drone with the four batteries, I did measure how far I could get, and it was around 130 to 140 feet. The thing to notice here, if you see in the video, whenever I'm going away from myself, I would have a pretty clean signal. But as soon as I would turn, then it would drop off and I would get static. And that makes sense. This antenna here is right on the side. You have this TPU mount down here. And traditionally, most drones have the antenna going vertical, sticking up. So talking about the video image on this drone, this angle on this drone is really high. Sometimes I just wanted to fly it very slow, but because this angle is so steep, you have to get that tilt on here. That means you have to fly this drone a lot faster than you really want to. Uh, the next thing to note was the image quality from the camera. Now, this is a small drone. I don't expect any high resolution camera on here. The resolution is adequate, actually. What was interesting was the image uh, color. It was very dark and also, it was very brown, very warm. A lot of warm images, but I don't know if I could change the color settings on this either. There's no plug for camera control on here. Besides all of that, the build quality is amazing. I flew this thing so many times. I crashed this so many times. No broken propellers, nothing. The hardest part about crashing really is trying to find your drone. So the grass wasn't that high and I would crash numerous times and luckily there's not a built-in beeper in here. Obviously the beepers are from the motors, but you would put the beeper on just to find your drone and just to avoid stepping on this thing. All right guys, so as far as ratings on this drone, now that I have a longer time flying it, on a scale of one to five, this thing gets three stars out of five with three lows out of five. 
This is not a bad drone, it's pretty cool. I would say this is a novelty item. The fact that it's an Acker drone, very, very small. It has all the components of a traditional drone. If you really wanna get serious about Acker, you're probably not gonna use this. If you really are serious about Cinemax, you're probably not gonna get this. So I understand the uniqueness of having a drone this small, but I do feel this drone will be significantly better if it was just a tad bit bigger. Maybe you can put a larger VTX in there. You'd have the adjustability for the Ford camera. And also maybe you might wanna consider getting a 2S battery on here as well. 2S might be a stretch, but there are some larger 1S batteries that would work. So yeah, that's just my wish for this drone. Tell me what you think. Uh, what do you think is missing from this drone? Or if you had the ability to change some of the options on this drone, what would be it? Would it be the VTX? Would it be the camera? Do you enjoy the one? I think one S is just unique. Would you change that or would you go to two S? So let me know about this drone in the comment section down below. If you have any questions also leave them down there. I'll be happy to answer those questions. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. You'll be notified whenever I do drop a new FPV video guys. So anyways, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.